Hello? Is anybody there? Despicable people in the Brian Denlinger group, cult. I mean, how low can you get? Hopefully it's showing. Hello. Uh, <coughs> oh, is anybody there? Are we live? Oh, oh dear. Is anybody there? John? The chat isn't showing up on this. Oh, John. Hello. What's going on on YouTube? Oh. Great. Obviously, we have to be very careful about what we say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because oh, the Denlinger trolls are going to be watching us and reporting our videos. I, I would never report Denlinger's live stream if, if I had a legitimate, <laughs> legitimate complaint while he was doing a live stream. Oh, I don't yeah. Come on. Again, again, it just shows who is stalking you and who is obsessed with who. Yeah. I mean, what I did was legal. I didn't break any laws, but they're just like, oh, we gotta shut it down. No. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't a good idea to do that. Because they're just gonna use that against you now. Yeah. They're gonna say you dox them and all types of stuff. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, probably, they're, they're probably gonna say a dog. <laughs> Great, but they don't understand that the white page is perfectly legal, so they don't understand that. There's no chat showing up on there. Where? On 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 the you oh no there it is. Yeah, it is it's showing up. Yeah. Uh, what, what was we discussing then? I don't know. Well, I was just discussing on how I woke up from after the after oh, yeah. video. I just woke up from all the all yeah the stuff, man. Because they called Tim lost, and I was surprised. Yeah. Oh, instantly they, they called him, him lost. They sent him a gospel message as far well, as I know. Me, yeah, I mean. Yeah, and Brian Hart of the comment too. Brian Hart of the comment that sent him a gospel message. Is he implying that he thinks Tim is lost too? Yeah. And then he kicked out Brian Harlow last day's maze. Wait, Brian Harlow and uh, what? Last day's maze. Uh, oh, what's he called? Jake. Oh yeah, Jake Mays. Yeah. All right, yeah. I remember him. Yeah. He used to be in live streams with Brian. Yeah. Google Hangouts, yeah. or whatever you call it. Well, but now he the got first kicked one... out of. Huh? Keep going. Keep going. Go. Right, I was going to say, now he got kicked out of, of Brian's false cult that he runs, but 
you know, that's what it comes down to. If you disagree with Brian, you're kicked out of the cult now. Uh, that's true. I wonder if more people are going to wake up to that. What, what's going on there? It's a right heaving mess. I've gotten lots of emails from people saying that they actually support me and they agree that Brian, yeah, Brian, Brian's very cultic and, and, you know, he behaves, he kind of behaves a lot like a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness where it's like this us versus them mentality. Anyone's not with our little circle of friends is lost, basically, or, or you know, we push in their salvation. That's kind of the mentality I get from these guys, which is very cultic and, you know, kind of the same thing the Freemasons do and stuff. Yeah. Hey, even I'm not doing that. I still think Brian saved. We're not like I'm not attacking him. I think he's saved, but he just needs to get out of that mindset of just calling people lost instantly. Yeah. I don't even know that. So. Oh yeah. So if you don't know who he is, he's like he's this little novice kid who just who thinks he's in full time ministry, but really he he's only been saved for about. Oh, well, supposedly only been saved since 2016. He's like 23 years old and, and thinks he's in full time ministry. And, and there's oh, that's been, what I got several say. times. Yeah, exactly. There's been several times where he says, "I'm quitting ministry. I'm no longer fit." But then comes back saying, "I'm fit for ministry again." So he's he's double minded. He well, anyway, he'll yeah. say he's, he's quitting ministry. He's no longer fit. Then comes back saying, he's "For like, there's been like two different times I know of where he comes up and says, I'm not fit to preach. I'm I'm no longer fit for ministry. I'm I'm quitting.' Then he comes back saying, "Yes, I'm I'm in full time ministry." So he he's he's a double minded hypocrite, and he he just thinks he can call everyone. Like he's like he's a novice kid who just thinks he can call everyone lost. That doesn't believe like him. <coughs> you know what I think yeah. is really. I think. The drugs he used to be on has messed his brains up. Oh yeah, I mean, well, I mean, eh, probably so because he can't. He just he's puffed up with pride and he can't see his own hypocrisy. And it's like he he condemns me for stuff he's guilty of himself. He says he says that I'm lazy and I'm stealing stealing money from Brian. Meanwhile, they have a job. He gets government benefits for so-called health problems he has. So. But they call, then he calls me lazy. A guy like me who works during the week. Stealing money. Stealing money what from Brian, thing? sure, you know. Yeah. Yeah, says well, the guy who, who has no job, gets government benefits and donations, so. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have a PayPal account on there, does he? So the people that like try to go in ministry, they should like take Jesus as an example because he went in the ministry at thirty years old. He waited till he was thirty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. These young kids, these these young kids who've only been saved for like a few years, have no business being a full time ministry. You know, yeah. and Aaron Deering is an example of why these young kids. I mean, I'm 18 years old and I make Christian videos, but I don't claim to be in ministry. I don't I don't preach sermons. I just make short yeah. Christian videos. That, that's you know, that's not running a ministry. Deering thinks he like, actually claims he's in ministry and he, he thinks he's preaching sermons. I mean, these, these young kids who have only been saved for like a few years and like are in early 20s have, have no have no authority to be in full time ministry and just call everyone lost. That's the thing. Uh, well, it doesn't have. I mean, I don't know what sort of trouble he's caused. I don't care. I, I'm sick of hearing his name, but. He, the thing, the, thing about, the thing about Aaron is that, you know, I've talked to some people and, and we agree, like me and some other people have agreed that like he's caused all kinds of division and strife within the body of Christ, the whole spirit of Antichrist challenge there, but the other times where he just causes all kinds of division. Um, that's why I, I sometimes wonder, could he be a Jesuit just just trying to cause division? Because all he does is just cause division. But, you know, I, I think he's just some novice kid who just who just thinks he, he thinks he's called in the ministry, but, you know. Yeah, and, and you know, like the Bible says, you know, not a novice lest he be lifted up in pride. Paraphrasing, but you know, when these these young when these young kids who have like who are just babes in, in Christ think they're in full time ministry, they get they, they're novices and they get lifted up in pride. And I see that with, I see I was seeing that with Aaron. Whenever someone would try to correct him, he would just get mad. 
and, and these young kids that they, who are think they're in ministry, I've seen a lot of times where they try to get, where people try to correct them and they just get really mad because they're prideful. Yeah. Is he a, does he teach Lordship Salvation? The Aaron guy? Uh, Aaron Daring does definitely teach the Lordship Salvation. I mean, he, he openly says that a person has to be weeping and bawling their eyes out or else they've not really been saved. Which, which in my video yeah. exposing him, that there, there are exa I gave examples in scripture of people who were not doing that and yet were still saved, basically, and, and who were not who were not doing what Aaron says needs to be done for salvation, and yet they still got saved, which you know again shows that Aaron's a novice, but uh, he is a lordship salvationist definitely. He he basically is like Brian says, adds all these different things to salvation. You have to believe this way, you have to do this, you have to do that. I feel so I feel like the reason. They think like that is because they got saved around their twenties and their life was messed up before they got saved. But if you get saved yeah. while you're young, it's it's not gonna be as messed up. You're not gonna be crying and bawling your eyes out. Like I got saved really young at thirteen. So Oh yeah. I mean, because that's the thing is that they they say that your life has to be wrecked. Your life, you know, your life has all this stuff. Well, that's only for them. Not like there again. There are examples yeah. in the Bible of people whose li whose lives were not wrecked and they, they still got saved. So, I like I've I've been saying this for for like some time now that this thing of of saying this stuff like your life has to be wrecked. It has to. Be, so saying that stuff has to happen before God saves you, in my opinion, is nothing more than just backloading works. Because saying this stuff has to happen or else God won't save you, which, you know. To me, it's just building works. Yeah. And I feel like the like calling can be any kind of way. Like they they use it as asking, but you can call to the Lord any type of way. Yeah. Like you can say, Lord Jesus, I know that you died for my sins, and I believe. Like you know, you can call them that way. You know, admit you're a sinner and all that. But asking and begging, no. Yeah, I mean, you, you can ask. Like I feel like you can get saved knees. that way. But begging, I agree with you. They, no. they make it seem, they make it seem like you have to just be on your knees begging and crying. Well, I mean, that may have been the case of them, but that's not always going to be the case. I mean, when I got... What? My mic got muted. Sorry, I just, uh, I heard static sounds or whatever. Uh, I think it was TV in the back. Down. Oh. Uh, I was just saying that you know that you know they they make it seem like someone has to be just be weeping and bawling their eyes out, and that's calling upon God, which is heresy. People who didn't yeah, do that I mean, and were still saved. Yeah, it's, some people call it different, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's not some kind of carbon copy reaction to salvation. You know, to say so is heresy. And anyway, Aaron is one of these. Uh... I think he's so, some sort of ex-Catholic, well, not even ex-Catholic. I think he still probably is. Limited atonement. Wait, what? Linda, you got to say that 13? Over 50 years ago. Man. Wait, how old are you guys? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 18. Uh, I'm 61 this year. Oh man, I'm 17. Oh, oh yeah, Linda's asking what happened. Linda's asking what happened to the live stream. If you don't know what happened, Linda, what happened was uh, I think because I showed his address, um, some of his followers I think just mass reported the stream and got it shut down for for it said cyber bullying and, and harassment or something like that. Yeah. So. Have you seen the video where um, Brian, um, where basically Brian says he's gonna like sue Ed Fenninger for harassment? Like I'm taking legal action on Fenninger for harassment. I mean Brian Dellinger yeah. was really angry. He was like screaming and shouting in that video. Yeah. Yeah, Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, Lin Linda. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Um, uh, because what happened with the white pages is that the white pages are, are are legal. They're not like against the law or anything. Um, but I, I guess his followers just thought I was doxing him or something like that, so they reported it. Oh well. I wonder if those pigs are still listening now. <laughs> yeah. If they are, it just shows who is who is obsessed and who is stalking who. If, if that's the case, you know. Well, hey, it must have been know, waiting. If, 
something like that. I don't know. I mean, there was, like, there was five in the... In the uh, I can see three watching now. Yeah. Oh, hello. Hey. You know what's kind of funny? So, so, so if any of you Denley rights are watching this, hey, remember Titus 3.10, a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. If we're heretics, reject us. You don't have to watch everything we do. You know? No. Thou hypocrites. Yeah. But they're so thick. Some of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's really the only like thing I have a problem with with Brian. Like, he led me to the King James Bible, led me to the Godhead, but everything else, I mean, he just judges people off their works. It's not it's not okay. Call yeah. them lost, playing yeah, video yeah, Linda's, games. Linda's right. Yeah. Yeah, Linda's right. Yeah, Brian sends his goons to go spy on people. Yeah. You know, they're, they're total hypocrites. They'll say, yeah, you take after the first and second admonition, reject, you know, but then but then they, then they can just watch everything we do and, you know, try to get us shut down. They're hypocrites. They're Pharisees. So, surprised. Yeah, Linda's right, but Brian will just stab people in the back who just, who go against him, you know? Which is just a sign you're, he's a pope because you know this is why we call him Pope Brian because you know anyone who goes against him he just calls him lost or calls him a Jesuit or something like that. Yeah. Well, while he was having a conversation yeah. with Tim, yeah, having... I can't believe he called Tim Tim lost because yeah. they both literally preach the exact same thing, but Tim knows not to judge people off their walk with with the Lord and stuff. He knows not to do that, but Brian does. But I, I think Tim is also like that too. Like he says, you have to, you know, your life has to be wrecked or something like that. I don't agree with that either. I think Tim teaches that too. If his life is wrecked, uh... Here, here's this uh, this screenshot I took from uh, uh, Alexander Hart. This is this is like this is one that I was like you know going back and forth with Alexander Hartley, but you know. Uh, and he's, he's a prideful heretic, but, uh, he basically says, um, this is after the whole Brian Tim thing happened. He says, uh, the thing you're not realizing is that Mr. Conan is not a brother. Do not, do not be lacking in discernment. We have a fake devil attacking a servant of God. So he's calling Tim a fake devil attacking a servant of God because Tim voiced disagreements with Brian Dellinger. I mean, it just shows how cultic this group is. And when I saw that, I immediately took a screenshot and said, you know, this is very cultic what he's saying. Because what well, Tim was attacking the Savior of God. Um, listen, I don't want to because, because Tim's not attacking a servant of God, he's trying to correct Brian. And Brian is just too prideful to take the correction. And you got this little Alexander Hartley guy, this um, Aaron Daring Sodomite buddy, who comes out and calls Tim a fake devil. I mean, this got me really mad when I saw him do this, because it just shows how cultic they are. If you go against Brian, you're a fake devil attacking a servant of God. You know, it's a cult. What do you mean by fake devil? I mean, the grammar there. Yeah, exactly. Is... I mean, they fake. just call everyone devils. I mean, you call them a sodomite. Devil, like a big... <laughs> yeah. I called him a sodomite because apparently he's like a former sodomite, but he's still believes <laughs> I just called him a sodomite, buddy. <laughs> But are, well, are you Austin hearing the Hartley background of my mic? I'm I muted. Yeah. Comes on when that squelch. Hold on. Alexander Hartley is that that guy is just puffed up with pride. I mean, I I tried to go back and forth with him, and he just will not admit to me wrong. And and then when I, then when I tried to rebuke him on that, he just said, "Oh, you can't rebuke an elder." It should it's be like, good he's now, not even right? an elder. He's not even in ministry, so you know, yeah. he he's just puffed up with pride. Who? Alexander Hartley. Oh. Yeah, well, Alexander Hartley and uh, Accountable KJB are birds of a feather. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen, uh, what's his, what's his, the guy that looks, what's his name again? The guy that looks just like Brian? Oh, Philip or something like that? Yes. Yeah, the Brian he sends people the gospel message. 
for anyone that just goes against him, he sends them the gospel. Gospel. Message, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. He 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 did that with Tim. He sent he sent Tim Brian's gospel message. He just sent yeah. Tim gospel message to anyone that goes against Brian. I mean, I I did a video on him one time where you know the guy looks like a clone of Brian Dillinger. I mean, you know, Brian Dillinger will condemn emulation, but why don't they say anything about Philip Newton? I mean, if anyone's guilty of emulation, it's Philip Newton. I mean, he looks like a carbon copy clone of, of Brian, and yet not a word out of Brian or any of his followers about that. Yeah, I was on Phil Newton's channel this afternoon. Uh, I commented and told him because I could see a, a Tiffany lamp on his table, and I said, uh, I commented that uh, that Tiffany lamp doesn't belong to him, it belongs to Mega Daily. Yeah, because he's a thief. He, Tiffany lamp. She. He's got all of all of her property, her identity, papers, documents, clothing. Kicked her out of the house with nothing. Yeah. I mean, Philip Newton is really wicked. I mean, I I, ne I never listened to the guy. Even when I was with the Brian Diller call, I never listened to Philip Newton because he always gave me the creeps. I mean, just just his his just cloning mm -hmm. of Brian Dillinger just always gave me the creeps. <laughs> His voice. I I did a video on you know Philip and I'll see like see if I can send the link or whatever. But I mean the guy the guy is just so cultic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen that video already. The video of Philip Newton emulating Brian. Yeah, it, it was called uh, Philip Newton's cultic and sinful emulation of Brian Dellinger. That's what the video was called. I mean, it's like he's got the same hat, same beard, same bookcase in the background, same banner, same desk with a laptop on it, you know, same outdoor sermons, same hat he wears outside, you know. He doesn't and, have and a he even opens, He even it has the same intro as Brian Dillinger, too. They should be ashamed of themselves, but they are too prideful for that. Yeah, they're a respective exactly, person, yeah. to be honest. Until yeah, you go against them, that's when they'll finally talk about you. But if you're with them, they won't. They won't like say anything. Yeah. What one of my issues I have with Brian is that you know he kind of like like he he loves to kind of say I'm an old man now I'm I'm older. It's like you know he's not even middle aged yet. So like I, I kind of got annoyed when he kept telling this kept trying to act like some kind of wise old coot when the guys the guys like barely even middle aged yet. So it's like. I mean, he's not even middle-aged, so you know, don't try to play this wise old coot with, with you know, don't try to act like you're like he's this wise old coot. I, you know, I didn't say it to him, but you know, I felt like saying to him, you know, don't try to act like this wise old coot with me because he's not even middle-aged yet. Yeah. Like he's in his forties. I mean, you know, but he's like, I'm an old man now. I have a, I have a clip of him literally saying, I'm an old man now. It's like you're not even in your fifties yet. <laughs> Amir. Hello? I've just made you a moderator. Oh, thanks. On, on my channel, <laughs> not that it's a deal or anything. But yeah, I, I guess we'll see who's right or wrong at the judgment seat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah the, rap, the rapture will show who's really safe and who's false. That, that's the yeah, the, at the judgment seat, it, it's going to all unfold and see who was right, who was wrong. I do yeah. believe Brian saved, but he just same here. Could swim in pride. I believe he saved. I just think he's got some. I just think he's got some pride issues. Same thing with the rest of them. Yeah, Linda Edmondson writes there's this ra rational wiki, you know, and I'm I'm not supportive of rational wiki, but they have 55 pages on Brian Dillinger. That says that says <laughs> something about the guy. They they can write 55 pages of. They can write 55 pages of information attacking one guy. I mean, that's it. That says something about Brian Dunlinger. Well, yeah. He's upset a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. He certainly has. I mean, Steven Anderson, they have like what eight pages on Steven Anderson. Like, I'll see, I'll see if I can actually find the article. But he, like, the Rational Wiki had like eight or nine pages on Anderson, but 55 pages on Brian Dillinger. Let's see if I can find it. Rational Wiki. Uh, 
Uh, Brian Denlinger. From, from what I know about Rational Wiki, they're basically like a satire website or something like that. From what, from what I know about them. Um, but, and, and they're an atheist website too, but Steven Anderson. Rational Wiki. So I'll just share my screen. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it does say it does say something about Brian Dilling. They can write 55 pages attacking him. Like, so you go on Brian Dillinger's Rational Wiki page. They have all this they can write about him. If you um, hit oh, wait, print uh, for for print, um, it, when it loads up finally, it see it, yeah, right there. It says 55 pages right up there. 55 pages yeah. on Brian <laughs> basically if you're if you're if you're, if you're basically if 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 I was gonna print this out and you know staple it together or whatever, it would be it would be a fifty five pages of, of paper that I'd waste on this thing, of you know. No way, it waste. But, um, or, if I, or, if I, or if I was da if I was to download it as a PDF too, it would be fifty five pages. Now if you go on Steven Anderson, it's uh, it it's only eight pages on Anderson, so it, it's like only eight pages. But then you got fifty five pages on Brian Dillinger. You know, that that much information about the guy, with There's Steve Anderson only. Well. Yeah, yeah. The guy put his wife on there too. I do not believe for one millisecond that she was in military intelligence. No chance. I yeah. don't believe Wait. it. Wait, who? Brian's wife. Brian Dillinger's wife. Yeah. She's supposed oh. to have been between intelligence, and that is just BS. <laughs> yeah. I never believe that. There, there was this guy named uh, Chris LaSala who said that, you know, Brian's wife should, quote, shut her mouth and, and keep it home or whatever. Um, I don't know about that, but, you know. Well, the sport watching now. Uh. Oh. Oh, well, that's Aaron Deering right there? Yeah. It was. You know, oh, yeah, I've been. Yeah, yeah that, I've done stuff with Aaron Deering, yeah. I've been thinking for years, John, that the ugliness of the evil inside a person, if you know what I mean, shows in their features, in their face. Yeah. Uh, how far I would go with that, I don't know. A video about what, Linda? Oh, Rational Wiki. Yeah. Yeah. And the best in <coughs> Oh no, do you have COVID now? <laughs> no. <laughs> And they're basing all their all of their behaviour supposedly on God's word, the King James Bible. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. Linda, I seen that. He did yeah. make a video about that. But he changed his mind, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not yeah. I, If you guys don't know, I, I made this I made this image of Brian Dillinger a couple days ago. And I've been using it as my thumbnail for some of the videos I made. Yeah, that was very well done, that John. Thanks. Watch out! You're gonna be in the Brian Dillinger hate cult. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I guess I'm now with the Brian Dillinger hate cult now. No, we don't hate him. I mean, it's just. I mean, I I only disagree with him on like that part, you know, begging for salvation and stuff like that. But anything else. Oh, yeah, and judging people off their sound, like off their works. 
But anything else besides that, he's okay. I, I don't hate him. No. I don't hate him either. I just think he's got some pride issues. That's my main point of contention. I I made I made this one too. Yeah, that's another good one. Thanks. Thanks. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've used this one as a thumbnail for some of my videos too. Can't wait for the rapture, man. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I just been thinking about it a lot lately. Out of nowhere too. I feel like twenty twenty is the most year I've ever thought about it. Like literally every day. Same here too, actually. I, I've, it's like I've, something I've telling me that this might ha might have been this year or next year or something. I'm not a date setter, but I just think about him a lot more lately than I used to. Pretty much every day, I've been, th I've been thinking about the rapture like every day now, pretty much. Uh, that's how I've been thinking yeah. about it. Like every day, I've been, I've been like wondering, hey, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? I feel like if Trump dies, that's that a lot of it's going to be a lot of riots, probably. Or if Biden wins, there's gonna be a lot of riots, and it's just got a lot of people gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, if you live in a city. Yeah, Linda Edmondson. Yeah, Linda Edmondson. Yeah. yeah. Brian has a video where he dresses up like a pope, and then his wife dresses up like a nun. That was funny. Uh, Have you seen that video where his his um he he, he dresses like like a pope or whatever, and his wife dresses up like a nun? Yeah. Have you seen that video? No. Oh, I am. I am. Yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can find it. Was it. It's, it's, yeah, actually. I wasn't sure what the point was. <laughs> he actually, he actually has a couple of videos. He has, he has like one about like the danger of like religious uniforms or something. Then, then he's got like one uh, where like he has like this fake voice. He has like this fake high pitched voice where um, he is like basically making fun of Roman Catholicism. Amen to that. Roman Catholicism is satanic and ridiculous, but you know. yes. I try to tell a lot of Roman Catholics that, and they just they say we don't pray to Mary. We we ask her to pray for us or something like that. But if you read Aeliates or however you pronounce it, nine five, you know the dead know nothing, so they don't know what's happening on Earth right now. Yeah, and, and another thing too is that it's funny because they say, oh, we don't we don't worship statues. But yet they bow down before them, which by biblical standards is worship and idolatry. So, yeah, yeah, they pray the rosary. Yeah, which and is the main repetition. And then they call Catholics fathers, and in the Bible yeah, it says, "Call no man." Too. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and they call the Pope Holy Father. They they give Pope titles for God, Holy Father, which is blasphemy to give to give the give a man a title for God. Oh yeah, call no man father. Matthew twenty three verse eight verse through nine. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and the term holy father is is a title for God. It's spiritual father. Uh, yeah, not yeah. like and, and then calling a man holy father. I guess the, the word pope means holy father. So calling a man holy father is blasphemy because that's the title for God. Found it finally the video. You see, Catholics say that that they ask Mary to pray for them. But they don't tell you how they manage to ask Mary, do they? Yeah. Even though Mary's dead. And she was a sinner. Yeah. And another thing too is that, you know, why would you want Mary to pray for you if you can just if you can just go directly to God? Because they don't believe you can go directly to God. They think you have to go through the priest or you have to go through this and that. Because if you could go directly to God, then what's the point of asking Mary to pray for you or go to talk to God for you? So, you know. Oh yeah, Linda, I've seen that video. Yeah, I sent a lot of Catholics that video. I sent Catholics that video and they just, no, that's not true. That's yeah, that, that, it was funny. <laughs> but, like, you know, what he brings up in the video is true. I mean, it just... He does bring up good points in that video. It just how, shows how ridiculous Roman Catholicism is. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like, like where um they like you know the Eucharist and you know the money for the penance and that kind of stuff. And you know, it, if you donate money, we'll you know this much money will give you something. Or you know, it, it was pretty funny actually. Yeah. I do enjoy it. 
And then the Catholics also confess their sins to the priests. And they say yeah. that the successors of the apostles and even the apostles couldn't forgive sins. So Yeah. And, and, and you know, um, they, they, say, they claim Peter was the first pope, yet Peter was married and he did not accept reverence. Yeah. You know, Acts if he 10, was the worst pope? someone bows down to Peter and Peter's like, you know, step out, I'm also a man. And then... There, I, think, exactly. I forget the verse, but it's in the book of Matthew where Peter has a wife. So if he's, if he's a pope, he's a pretty bad job at it. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. you're right, the apostles did not forgive sin. So, you know, if, if, the, if, they're, if they're a po apostolic succession or, succession or whatever, you know, they're doing a lot well, of things that are sense. not apostolic because the apostles never forgave sins. Exactly. Like in their name, basically, they, they didn't say, "In you know, thy sins be forgiven." They just they would you know, they would they would not forgive sins. They could never call themselves apostles because they could never qualify. If they read Acts chapter one properly. They might realize that. Yeah, not to mention that First because... Corinthians fifteen proves that Paul was the last apostle. So. Because in order to be an apostle, you have to actually have seen Jesus Christ, which you know no, nobody today has seen Jesus Christ physically. So, you know, no, yeah, nobody that, today that, can claim to be. That's an why the the other apostles were like shocked at first. They wanted to know who was he, and then they met up with him, and then they heard this testimony, testimony and stuff in the Book of Acts. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever, whenever, whenever charismatic wing nuts comes and says i'm an apostle just ask him have you ever have you have you physically seen jesus christ because that's because to be an apostle you have to have physically seen jesus christ so just ask yeah, him exactly. if, you've seen jesus christ. if they say no then just tell them you know then you're not you're not an apostle by biblical standards yeah yeah and then, and then they believe you can uh heal and do signs and stuff but it was over after yeah. paul it was done yeah, exactly. Jeez. Because you know, uh, and if you read if you read the verses, the sun gifts were, were could only be done by the apostles. They were not done, which you know, which is why charismatics have the have the apostles. Because you know, in the Bible, it was very clearly only the apostles could do like the healing yeah. and the sign gifts. It was the not Jews a sign. Person. It was just for the yeah. It was and, and not to mention it was a sign for the it was a sign for the Jews. First Corinthians yeah. one twenty two talks about how the Jews require a sign. So. You know, we don't need we don't need a sign because we have the completed word of God. That's what the Jews do, though. The Greek seek after wisdom, and the Jews yeah, require and a the sign. Jews require a sign. <laughs> that, that that's actually why the signs come back in the time of Jacob's trouble because the Jews require a sign. Yeah. Just can't wait for the rapture, man. I'm done with yeah. this world, and I've only hey, been man. safe for four years. I haven't been safe for that long, and I just am done. Yeah, I I'm ready just to, just to get out of, get out of this evil world, and just you know go meet my creator. Yeah. How long have you have you guys been saved? Uh, for about, I've been well, saved for about a year. I got saved in ninety two. Oh. In jail. Oh. I'm actually a, I'm a former atheist actually I, I used to be an atheist and then I was a false convert then I got saved in back in January yeah I used to be a Muslim all right what convinced you that Islam was wrong for you Amir well it's like it's just you know just a lie you know it, it doesn't even make himself known. Like, how can a Muslim change? There's no Holy Spirit. There's nothing that he gives you. He's just unknown. Well, they do mention taqwa, don't they? Hmm? Uh, taq, uh, do they call it taqwa or tak... Uh, uh, they have some sort of word for spirit, don't they? What, tawhid ta or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. I well, I was a horrible I, I Muslim, so... Said. I was just born into it. That's how a lot of Muslims are Muslims now, because they, they're born into it. Yeah. I think I'm I didn't actually... Uh, it was, it was 
thing about Islam is it was spread by the sword. It was it wasn't like people did it by willfully. It was spread by the sword. That's the thing. Exactly. I've never seen someone convert. Well, I did, but not too many people convert to Islam. Like how many people convert to uh, Christianity? Yeah. I, I don't mean, think with there's me, that many. You know, most. Most most Christians become atheists, but mo most atheists don't become Christians. So, you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of that you know rare person where it's actually turning away. It's actually where I turn away from atheism and towards Christianity. So, you know, because I, I was I was like when I was in eighth grade, I was you know kind of I was getting into atheism and you know saying there's no God. And uh, what, I think when I was 15 years old, I I basically came across Stephen Anderson, and you know I I began believing in God, but I was basically obviously a false convert. And then, um, or, 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 you know, what Brian would call a religious atheist, which I agree with that term. And then, you know, in January, I got truly born again, so. Yeah. Why do people despise other people's salvation amongst the Christian sort of thingy, you know? Yeah. Why? I don't know, because I guess when you're just the Lord, you know, when you're like sanctified more, they just the pride just consumes them like wine. Yeah. And there's no such thing as a Christian becoming a, an atheist. There's no such no. thing because in uh, I got the verse. Hold on. I think it's in John. Oh yeah, first John two nineteen. Yeah, there's no no such thing as a true Christian is becoming an atheist. No, if they were a true Christian, they could never become atheist. Yeah. No. It's actually funny, I might I might do a video on this actually, but uh, Manson actually used to grew up in a Christian home. And, you know, I might do a video on how basically organized religion, because all these celebrities who become Satanists and that kind of stuff, they all grew up in organized religion, you know, quote unquote Christianity, and then they turn away from it because they don't have a personal yeah. relationship with Jesus exactly. Christ. It's, all just organized, it's just organized religion. They, they go to the church and think they're Christian. That, that's what it is. The church building is really like thinking people are Christians. Like a lot of false Christians will say, I go to church. I'm a good person. That's what a lot of them will say. It, 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 it deceases, it deceases them. Yeah, and and then they see kind of all the, the double standards, hypocrisy among the church. And then they they go away from it and you know become atheists or you know join the Church of Satan or whatever. Yeah. I think yeah, a lot of people. Is deceived by the um, street preacher movement too. Because when I first got oh, yeah, saved, you know, movement. yeah, the street preacher movement is pretty wicked, actually. I, I've looked into yeah. some of them, and they basically preach Roman Catholicism. They they preach like exactly the same as what Catholics believe, in terms of salvation goes. They say you have to be sinlessly perfect and all this other stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you compare what they say for salvation with what the Catholic Church says, it's basically the same thing. You know, it's not a one-time event. It's this continual process of living in holiness and, mm. and obedience and that kind of stuff. And like exactly. the Catholics say you have to die in a state of grace. These preachers say you have to basically die in like a sinless holy state to go to heaven, basically. You, ha you can't with living in sin, basically. You have to die in like a sinless state, which is basically what Catholics believe. You have to die in a holy state. So... And not to mention that the, you know, and if the, you the, don't, uh, purgatory. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't die, in front, <laughs> it's just nowhere in the Bible. Their final authority is their priests and not the Bible. That's their problem. Yeah. Or the Pope. And also with the street with the street preachers, also a lot of the, a lot of them also deny eternal security. They deny the righteousness because they're, they're self righteous. They want to work their way to heaven. Yeah. They don't want to. That, that, that's why they deny eternal security. They say you can lose your salvation if you do this or that kind of stuff. 
um, because they're working their way to heaven. That's why they reject the imputed righteousness because they want to make it by their own self righteousness. They don't want to put their trust in, in Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Yes, they're going to, because they're they're, they're self righteous. Wait, the uh, new version say you are being saved. Oh man, that's uh, oh, th there's a verse. That's in, there's a, a lot of people. In, there's a verse in the NIV. Oh, yeah, uh, a lot of the street preachers also they're not they're not like King James only. Yeah, they're not King James. You can tell versions, the Holy which, Spirit is not in them. They're not King James. Like eventually, yeah, the Holy exactly. Spirit will lead you to the King James. Yeah, and they'll quote new versions, which say like you're being saved, you're being sanctified. You know, you're 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 being saved. You know, or you were saved. That kind of stuff. Um, they'll quote these new versions to say, "See, to make it like, see, you know, salvation is a process." They're not King James. Like, I yeah, they also. They they say oh they they like to say oh there's two different types of sin willful and ignorant sin all all of them say that yeah they all say that I've seen every single one of them say and they that. quote Hebrew chapter ten I think and it's like if you sin willfully there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin and that the book of Hebrews is written to the Hebrews <laughs> you know in the time of Jacob's trouble too exactly. Because when they, when they look for a New Testament verse to prove you can lose your salvation, they always have to go to the Gospels before Jesus died on the cross, yeah. or they always have passages in the Or they go to Matthew 24. Yeah, Ma yeah, Matthew 24, 13. Or, or like back, they'll run back to the Old Testament, Ezekiel 3.20, that kind of stuff. They, like, they, they can never deal with the Pauline epistles. And they'll twist yeah. verses in the Pauline epistles, which talk about, you know, sanctification and make it out into salvation, basically. And, and they'll, they'll often take verses which talk about how, you know, uh, if you do this, you won't inherit the kingdom of God. And they, they basically will change what the kingdom of God means. Yeah, they don't even they'll, know they'll what it means. It like, yeah, they'll make it seem like the kingdom of God is heaven, which, you know, when it says you won't inherit the kingdom of God, it's just saying you'll get out of spiritual yeah. fellowship, but you haven't lost your salvation, though. Exactly. And then you get chastised, and that's when you get back into it, you know. When you yeah, start exactly, yeah. Go. yeah. And it, it's like very, very rarely would they ever talk about, you know, Ephesians one thirteen, which talks about you're sealed. You know, um, Ephesians yeah. four thirty, Second Corinthians one twenty one twenty two. It's all say you're sealed, uh, and th there's even verses in the book of John too, which I do believe is is transitioning from you know under the law to under grace, obviously because there's there's stuff in the book of John that mirrors Paul what Paul wrote. But you know, uh, like Jesus said in John six, he he won't lose us. John ten says we'll never perish. Um, you know, but you know, if, because if you could lose your salvation, then you're saved by works, because it basically means that you're having to do something to keep yourself saved. Basically, it's works. Yeah, what's that one verse where it says like Jesus can't deny you because that means he'll deny himself, or something like that? Uh, there was um, I think it was Second Timothy two or something. Yeah, you can't deny the member of the members of the body of Christ. You can't, because that would be denying himself. We got a thumbs down, John. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm devastated. <laughs> I've just got a comment. Uh, thanks for the thumbs down, you Denlinger gang. Wow. Yeah, but was uh, sorry. I quickly go do something, but yeah, with, with, with Second Timothy two. They, they always will quote the verse where it says, you know, if we deny him, he also will deny us. But they, they they'll never read the very next verse. Which says, you know, he basically can't deny himself. So once you're part of the body of Christ, you know, if he denies you, he'd be denying himself. But though they, they never read the very next verse. Yeah. And I know a, a really strong passage that, that a lot of people seem to miss with eternal security is, um, I believe it's First uh, Peter one three to five. Is a real, this is a really good one to use against them, um, people who say you can. I'll just share my screen. I'm not, I'm not sure if you, you've seen this one before, but it's it makes a lot of problems for the conditional security types. Um, yeah. Is my screen sharing? And let me just try this again. But yeah. I'll just read this out. There we go. Click on it. Click up again, John. Yeah. So it says um, in First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, yeah. this is a really good one to use against them, uh, the, con the conditional security types. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Christ, which according to his abundant mercy 
hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance in Christ undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. You know, your seed in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Oh, sorry, yeah, through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So you have a place in heaven, it doesn't fade away, it's reserved for you, and you're kept by the power of God. You know, how do you get around that? You know, you can't. You obviously can't lose your salvation. Because you're kept. I, I actually used that verse against uh, uh, one of these street preachers who was saying you can lose your salvation. I used it against him, and he like he couldn't answer it because it's very clearly contradicts his position. He he, he just had to see, he just all he re, all he responded with was that well conditional all he all he could say was that well you know if you have eternal security it means you can live however you want and still go to heaven. You know he he couldn't actually deal with the verse though. Yeah, they, they, they like to quote first John three six Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. But they don't even know what imputed righteousness is. Yeah, they don't know it's, anything it's talking about, about that. imputed righteousness. If you read it it's if you read it in context, it's talking about imputed righteousness when when basically your sins are not on your account. That's what it's saying. It's not exactly. saying you're sinlessly perfect. Because if that was the case the entire you would the entire Bible would like would, would just contradict itself if that was the case. If that was the if that was the case, then you know everyone's uh, going to hell if that was the case. <laughs> if that's the case, then it would contra- it con- Paul wrote in uh, what was the verse? It, it's like First Timothy one fifteen or something. It would contradict what Paul wrote because he yeah. said First uh, Timothy one fifteen. This is the faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of who I am, present tense, chief. So, those, you know, they, they, I heard them try to say, well, that was before he got saved. No, he says present tense of whom I am, of whom I am chief, present tense. So if, if then I guess Paul was lost because he says sinners of whom I am chief. So it's yeah. a problem there. And then Romans, I would like to see a street preacher read Romans chapter 7, <laughs> they would not know, yeah, understand I would that. Love, yeah, it, it's kind of funny because there's this little guy called, this is a guy called EJ Love, who, um, he's not he's not a sinless perfectionist, but he does, he basically has this weird thing of, oh, when you're saved, you're no, you're no longer a sinner, and he has to go back to the Greek and just to redefine what the word sinner means. But I did a video just proving he's self-righteous. He cannot admit that he's a sinner, so he has to say, well, you're not really a sinner, you know, um, but he, he, he tried to, he, I quoted seven to him, and he, he tried to say, well, that was, before, that was before Paul's salvation. Then I quoted verse 25 to him, which proved that Paul was, was saved and was still struggling with sin. And he, he just got mad and blocked me. So, it's funny. You should have sent him the verse with First John 2, I mean, what's it called? First, first John 1, 8. <laughs> should have sent him that verse. Yeah. He's not a sinless perfectionist, but he just believes we're not sinners when we get saved. He, first he, first he first basically first believes that you're no longer a sinner, basically. But, but in Romans, uh, he's, he's not a sinless perfectionist. Why am I hearing my voice? Why am I hearing my voice, too? I think that's Psalm. Oh. But you have Romans seven twenty five because they always have to like whenever whenever they do quote Romans seven they always have to say well that was before Paul got saved well then then just show them verse twenty five which says I thank God through uh, Jesus Christ our Lord so that with the mind myself may serve or I myself serve the law of God which you cannot do as a lost person but he says but the flesh is the law of sin so Paul was cl- clearly saved as he was writing that he was just talking about his struggle with the flesh but you know they can't they can't handle that because it would it would mess with their pride and self righteousness. So they can't handle it. <laughs> well, he changed the thing to Brian Dealing or the Parasite. Basically, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't really hate him, so I just don't. I'm not gonna like talk about him that much, but it just, yeah. What else? Um, 
Oh well, yeah, also a, another good verse proving that the flesh is sinful because uh, one of the biggest propagators of the sinless perfection thing is a, is a guy called Jesse Morrell, and, and he he's a total oh, yeah. relationist. I mean, he, he I mean he's he's against imputed righteousness. He's he's against substitutionary atonement. Um, he basically he basically says he basically says you have to just do works. To, I mean, he, he denies he's a work salvationist, but he basically says that salvation is not a one-time event. It's basically a process through works. But um, yeah. where is that? Because he and, he and he's a sinless perfection. He says you have to basically maintain a state of sinless perfection to be saved, essentially. And, and he's a he's open government theology or Mormon theology, open theism, um, just total work spell, but salvationist. Um, where was that verse? And, and, and he believes he's not a sinner. He believes he basically denies that you know we get a sin nature from Adam. Um, total, total. Oh yeah, he does work that. salvationist. Yeah, yeah he, he's he's a total work salvationist. Um, he's also friends that? with was it? Cleveland Street Preachers. If you know who that is, they're yeah. all street preachers. Just papists. Also, in EJ Love, EJ Love is also for, EJ Love claims to believe in eternal security, but yet he's friends with Kerrigan and Skelly, who is also a, a works righteous Roman Catholic, basically. Um, it's actually ironic because, because Romans eight is the is the verse I was looking for. Somewhere in Romans eight. It's funny because Romans eight also has a really good uh, verse on eternal security, which is uh, verses thirty five to thirty nine, which talks about how nothing nothing can separate you from God's love. Uh, again, they, they won't deal with that verse either because it contradicts them. But uh, I'm trying to see if I can find that verse where it talks about the flesh being. Here it is. Yeah, Romans eight three. For someone who says, "Oh, the flesh is not sinful," just show them Romans eight three because it makes a problem for them. Uh, for for what the law could not do, uh, in was weak through the flesh. God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. So it openly says the term sinful flesh in Romans 8 3. So our flesh is indeed sinful. Yeah. If you truly had to be sinlessly perfect, then why would our bodies have to be redeemed if we are yeah. truly sinlessly perfect? Our bodies redeemed so we don't sin no more and we don't feel pain. <laughs> yeah. This is that, that, that simple. I mean, if, if we could be sinless, then why did Jesus die on the cross then? You know? Exactly. So, oh, past sins, that, that's what they say. And, but then, you know, in the Bible, it says he died for the past sins. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are, there are actually four verses in the Bible um, that talk about how all our sins are forgiven. And, and again, like you show them to these street preachers, they can never handle it. Because it clearly says, you know, um, I think it's First John 1, 7, Acts 13, 39, Titus 2, 13, and Colossians 1, 14. I think 13 and 14 all say that, you know, all your sins are forgiven. All of them, basically, not not just your past sins. Yeah, they always, <clears throat> they always false define repentance. They say yeah. it's a turning from sin, but it's just having conviction over it. That's how you get saved. You turn from your sin after you're saved. Not all of it, because it's impossible, but. Yeah. But that's, they, you do they, that because you they love change. them. They, they change what repentance means. They say repentance means to basically turn from your sins as in like, not just basically having godly sorrow, but actually physically like turning and trying to live holy, which is, you know, it's not repentance. You that, should that's, do that's, that, that's but that's not false. how you get saved. That's how they, yeah. that's how they think they get saved, but no, you don't do that. You do yeah, it and, and, and saying, saying, and for them to say that's how you get saved is basically preaching Roman Catholicism. Because that's, that's what the Catholics believe. Put your, you basically believe in Jesus and do good works, which is what the Catholics yeah. say. They always like to quote James, faith without works is dead, but they don't James even know too. who that that's for the 12 tribes of, back in the uh, the tribulation or time of Jacob's trouble. They like to quote yeah. James, though. I was, I was going back and forth with the Catholic on Instagram about that. And it's just they always love quoting James 2.24, James 2.24, James 2.24, yeah. you know. And, and, and then they, they always love to quote James. And then when I show them James 1.1, 1, 1, which, you know, talks, which proves that the book of James is not even written to us. Um, exactly. They, 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 always, they, they always have to throw back, well, you know, all scriptures got by, given by inspiration of God. Yeah, but, you know, are we part of the 12 tribes? No, we're not. You know, it's very clear yeah. it says it's for the 12 tribes. So yeah, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, but that, does, that doesn't mean it's all for us as Christians. You know, if someone says that, just, and, just in, say, in terms, oh. In terms of salvation, in terms of salvation-wise, basically. Yeah. If someone says that, just say, 
Oh, I guess I have to um, sacrifice animals then, because I'm not a dispensationalist. Yeah. It's dispensationalist. You know, all, all yeah. scriptures is instructed, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of funny. These Stephen Anderson, this new IFB cult, it, it's funny they, they, they still quote Leviticus, you know, to say we should put adulterers, sodomites, etc., to death. I mean, okay, so if we're supposed to follow the book of Leviticus, then where's your animal sacrifice? You know, <laughs> where's where's going to the temple every day or every week or whatever? Exactly. You know, yeah, I mean, I mean, and, and you know, they, I mean, come on, they don't follow the book of Leviticus at all. Exactly. We live in a time of grace. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the book of Leviticus is good. It's good for understanding what is sin and what is not sin, but you don't apply those laws for today. Like in terms of enforcing them for today. Like I can go to the book of Leviticus and say, you know, here, you know, here, it's like, you know, homosexuality is a sin, but I don't go there and say, here, we should go put, we should go put sodomites to death because Leviticus says so. I, I would just go there to say, you know, here is proof that God says sodomy is a sin. That, that's what I would use Leviticus for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what's the name? But, yeah, God also repented. You know, he changed his mind. He had regret for making man on earth. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Oh, he said Jesus yeah, exactly. Burning hell. When I first yeah, got saved, yeah, I actually believed that, and the Lord let, let got, got me out of that. He got me out of that so but fast. When I was a false convert, I also used to because when I was a false convert, I was following Stephen Anderson. So I, you know, and he he said, "Well, millions of people believe that way." You know, not true at all. I haven't seen anyone besides him, yeah. like like anyone outside of the Catholic Church besides Anderson saying that Jesus burned in hell. Besides the charismatics, basically. I'm pretty sure when Jesus died, I'm not sure, but I think he went to Abraham's bosom, I think. I'm not sure on that, though. He went to Abraham's bosom and gathered up the Old Testament saints. That, that's why there's a resurrection yeah. of the Old Testament saints in Matthew 27. Because in, in Matthew 27, there's a resurrection of Old Testament saints. That's because he went down there and them up and took them up to heaven. Yeah. It, it's kind of funny because it just comes out and says that Abraham's bosom doesn't exist. And then, you know, how do you explain Luke 16? You know, that term Abraham's bosom yeah. is used in Luke 16. How do you explain the Old Testament saints that died? Because they didn't go to heaven. Yeah, it's kind of funny because Anderson says Anderson says they went to heaven. So, it's funny yeah. actually. What about like, Abraham they, they that, said, or Lazarus? <laughs> tell them that. Yeah, story. it's kind of funny. They, they, they can never handle Luke 16, but like... And, and it, it, because they're non dispensational so they, they say that saints in the Old Testament went to heaven like we do today. Okay. You know, it, impossible because yeah. their sins were not well, forgiven. So how did they go to heaven? Yeah. A lot of people that read the Bible, they don't even they need to rightly divide because that's how they get really yeah. confused and it just messes everything up. That used to be me when I first got saved, like. I was saved, but then, like, I see preachers, then they don't, they're not dispensational, you know? It just keeps works, works, yeah. works. And I was getting confused for a second. I was like, whoa, did I get saved wrong? And then, you know, the Lord led me to dispensationalism. Yeah, exactly. I mean, people who teach, like, a work salvation, they have to go back to the Old Testament. You know, they'll often quote Ezekiel 3, Ezekiel 33. They'll have to go to Revelation or Matthew 24, you know? They always, they always have to just run to all these different dispensations to basically teach their their yeah. pseudo, you know, their false gospel of works, basically. A lot of post-tribbers go to um, Matthew 24, too. And then yeah. you tell them, literally in the beginning of verse um, Matthew 24, I think it says, it's like, the, the disciples are literally asking, you know, Jesus on... When when will when these things shall come, and then he's just saying it, it will be the end of the world at that time, right? But they they don't read that. They don't read the part where it gives the full context of Matthew twenty four. They don't read it. Yeah, or, or or they don't read because they'll say it's for Christians, but they don't read where Jesus says, "Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains." You know, talks about keeping the Sabbath day. You know, which is clearly saying it's for the Jewish people. They won't read that. They'll, they'll have the 
and, and it's kind of funny because I, I I did a video on this where, you know, uh, because they often will try to say that Matthew twenty four lines up with First Corinthians fifteen and and First Thessalonians four. Well, simply comparing the two passages shows they don't line up because, you know, um, the rapture passages in Paul and Paul's epistles both mention dead saints rising first. You know, where's the, where's the mention of dead saints in Matthew 24? There's also, uh, um, was it, I think it's also God speaking with his voice like a trump in, in the rapture passages. There's no mention of that in Matthew 24. And there's also great signs mentioned in Matthew 24, which is not in the rapture passages. First Corinthians 15 and First Thessalonians 4. So they're not talking about the same event, honestly. Yeah. I told, I basically just told everyone in my family about the gospel and they just all rejected it. Mm. It's sad. But wait, so when you get to heaven, are you even going to remember them or what? Are you going to remember your life? Or I don't know. I don't know, actually. Because it does say old things are like passed away and stuff. So I don't know. If I even remember them. Yeah, Linda pointed out. Yeah, there's at least one video where, where Brian said, um, "If you go, if you like, if you go against the Jews, you lose your salvation or something." Yeah, that's heresy. Yeah, yeah. yeah he doesn't preach that anymore though. Because yeah, he, I, I, I that's heard Romans say eleven. He took, he, yeah, Romans eleven where it talks about like you're cut off or whatever. Yeah, he doesn't preach it anymore, but he used to because he was very confused on that verse back then. Yeah. He, he also said people who mess with God's word are also, they also lose their salvation, which, you know, obviously I wouldn't, obviously I wouldn't like, go, like I wouldn't mess around in those areas, but you know, if you can lose yeah. your salvation, I feel God's like if you're changing secure. God's word in the first place, do you really have the Holy Spirit? Like, and if you do yeah, and you're still changing it, you're going to get chastised or die probably. Yeah. That's chastised serious. severely too, probably. Yeah. But like you know, obviously, I, like some with the Holy Spirit obviously would be convicted when they would go against the Jews. But saying they lose your salvation, obviously Brian doesn't believe this way anymore. But um, basically, how was I going with that? But you know, basically, eternal security with exceptions is not eternal security. That's the thing, basically. Yeah. I can't wait for the Battle of Armageddon. That's just going to be, I don't know. I, I think about that a lot, too. Yeah. Do you think about that, too, Psalm? I, I, I've been thinking about that for quite a while. Is Psalm even here? Hi, oh, do I? Um, Psalm? Bob, you there? here. Yeah. Oh, his name's Bob. Yeah. yeah. I was just tweeting some of John's re retweeting some of John's tweets. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, one, anyway, on the Bob. plan. Are you looking forward to the Battle of Armageddon, Bob? The Battle of Armageddon? Uh, I don't think I'll be there. Oh, yeah. I think will be because the saints will be coming down with Jesus, won't they? For it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I wonder if, um, like, when you get resurrected and stuff, when the rapture happens, I wonder if old people will get young bodies again. I always thought about that. Well, we will get um, a resurrection body, a, a glorified body. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I would say so. I don't know how. It well, like works. the reason why our bodies have health problems and our body gets sick, and we, you know, we have to, you know, because it's you know, like we, we, you know, all this kind of stuff is because our body is corruptible. You know, our, our body is is corruptible. It's sinful. So yeah. that's why we have all these health problems. And we have to, you know, talk, constantly take care of our body. Uh, but you know, and, and when you get older, your body decays, and you know, kind of. You know that kind of stuff, but but I, I believe with the resurrection you'll have a body like as if you're a young person. You, you won't have like you know you won't have the problems you have down here with a corrupt with a with a corruptible body. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, the reason why we die, the reason why our bodies die, you know, because of old age, is because our bodies are corruptible. Even now, we're breathing in our our dead skin cells because of the dust that's the king off our body. Yeah. Yeah. Like, our cells have, our, our, our body cells have to constantly reproduce or else we die. Yeah. I also have another question about the, you know, the Millennial Kingdom. So... So you know he's gonna set in Jerusalem, right? And stuff. We all agree yeah. on that, right? Obviously. So yeah. does everyone does every safe person that have to be in Jerusalem? Or can you just like I kind of imagine it as making like a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to like, you know, do some stuff. That's, that's how I've ma- imagined it. Yeah. yeah, but obviously he's gonna be in Jerusalem because the book of Matthew says it's the city of the great king. You know, who is the king? Jesus Christ. So yeah. But are we going to be in Jerusalem as well? I, I, again, I've always I've always imagined it as, like, we, we make it to Jerusalem to... Because I do believe the, the animal sacrifices come back in the, in the millennium, so... That, that's my belief on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the word rapture's yeah. not, yeah, Linda's right. The, the word blessed hope, not in the Bible. that's the name for it. He's caught up. <coughs> the blessed hope. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah, the blessed hope or the resurrection, you know. Yeah, I, I do, I, I've i been trying to get away, I've been trying to myself get away from using the term rapture because it's not scriptural. The, the, the blessed hope, catching up, the resurrection, those, those that's the proper term. And, and, and the term yeah. pre-trib rapture is not scriptural. The proper term would be, they're basically the, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble resurrection or, or the, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. The, the reason I, like, keep saying tribulation, because a lot of people don't even know what time of Jacob's trouble is. They don't know the Daniel 7 yeah. week. They just say tribulation. They don't know what the other, what the real title is. So I'd say that to them because they don't, you know, some people might not know. Yeah, when I when I do videos on on the pre trip rapture, I I will use that term pre tribulational rapture just so people like know what I'm talking about. But you know, but but but, but when I know I'm talking to the people who like know the issue, then I'll, I'll I'll use you know time of Jacob's trouble. You know, I'll use the scriptural terms, but I, I'll use pre trip rapture when when you know, so people will just know what I'm talking about basically. Yeah. But like you know, they'll say you know you don't have one passage proving the pre-tribulation rapture. Well, that is true. We don't have a passage proving the pre-trib rapture, but we do have a passage proving the uh, pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away. But we don't have a passage because that term pre-trib rapture is not scriptural. So yes, we don't we don't have a passage proving it because because that term is not in there. <laughs> a post trip will say that, but there's no proof of a post trib either. Yeah, it's funny. They'll, they'll say, you know, they'll, they'll ask us for one verse, then we ask them for one verse. They'll run into Matthew chapter 24, which they'll say, see, they'll say Matthew 24 proves a, quote, post trib rapture, but yet that term post trib rapture is not in Matthew 24. Exactly. It's funny. And then Matthew 24, they think of it wrong. You know? They just don't even yeah, they, the they, they, they think that they, they think that when you're gathered on the four corners of the earth, they think that's the rapture. Well, no, it's actually just the Jews being gathered together for the battle of Armageddon. That's what it's actually going. On. It's not talking about them being gathered up at the rapture. Is, is that the elect? I think. Yeah, the elect. Yeah, it's the Jews, not not Christians. Yeah. Linda, Linda, do you want to come in the studio? The link there. And it's also funny too, because Matthew twenty four says the angels will gather the elect. Where where does Paul say the angels gather us up? You know, we're, we hear the voice and we're called up. We're not gathered by angels. So, you know, yeah, an, so another re- way of how they don't line up. I know at the battle of Armageddon is going to be like a trumpet, right? But is there is there also going to be a trumpet for the catching up or what? Uh, well, it does say that God it, it does it does say that God's voice is like a trump. So I, I do I do believe it it will sound like a trumpet. But like we're gonna hear his voice, it will sound like a trumpet. Like we're gonna hear our name, you know, so and so come up hither. Um, that, that's my belief on that. Um, you know, do do I know how that works? I don't understand how that work, but you know, mis- you know, mystery of godliness. But I do believe um, that it will it will sound like it will sound it have like the sound of a trumpet in the sense of your voice is like 
it just sounds really good or something. That's, you know, how I would explain it. Mm-hmm. Can't wait for that day. All my worries yeah. on this earth is over. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, the work you do for God will uh, will finally pay off, essentially. Yeah, you're going to get the crowns of life. I think that that's the easiest crown, like, just being excited that he came. That I think that's one of the crowns, if you're, like, you know, happy that he came. One of the crowns you get. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, the old hymn says, only when life uh, will soon pass, only what's done for Christ will last. You know, exactly. You know, what you do on here for yourself will not, will not profit you anything in, in the judgment seat, but what you do for Christ, that will last. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I always wonder about this too. So you know how when the baby or just kids, they're gonna be raptured up. I, I personally believe that they're gonna be raptured up too, like a baby or a kid. Anyone below the age of accountability is gonna be raptured up. I think. Oh yeah. I believe that. And then too. there's no, there's yeah. gonna be no more babies on the earth and stuff, and they're gonna have to like make new ones, and that's when the antichrist is gonna come in, because it's just gonna be proof. So for all these, these new agers out there that just say the rapture is fake, it's just gonna be a hologram. I've heard that there's like people be saying it's, like you know the Spider Man movie is gonna be like a hologram. It's gonna defeat people, but every baby is gonna be gone, and then they'll realize. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a joke. And, and, and not just babies, not just babies, but any child who's under the age of accountability, basically. Yeah. I always wonder, like, what what would they be doing, like, at the judgment seat? They're just gonna be standing, like, what are they gonna be doing? Yeah, my my belief on that is also um, people who have like you know disabilities, like maybe severe autism or whatever, who yeah, are not minded. capable of understanding they're a sinner. I believe they go up too it, because they're not capable of understanding they're a sinner. Yeah, the people minded. Sinner, basically. Yeah. I mean, if, if someone has like 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 autism or, or you know like, like like some kind of thing where they're just they're not mentally capable of understanding they're a sinner, you know, and it's not their fault. I believe they would go up too because you know the, the, it's and I think the control, they'll, they'll be healed they, too. They, I think. Understand it. What? They, they might be healed too. I'm pretty sure they will. Yeah. Sorry, my cat. Oh, uh, my cat wants out. I'll just, I'm just gonna go let him out. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I already seen like a video on that. There's gonna be some people saying that. It, there's a lot of UFO videos going around lately, and the, and the news are literally talking about UFOs. That's that's going to be their excuse. They're going to say a UFO happened or something. That's going to be their exact excuse. And then that's just going to deceive people into taking the mark. I can already see it. And it's gonna after the judgment, it's gonna be the marriage supper of the lamb. It's gonna, I think it's gonna last until the battle of Armageddon. <clears throat> yeah, we've got five people watching at the moment. Four people. If you're deadling us. Right, go away, go read your Bible, or go and wake up or somewhere, go somewhere else. Who is on uh, time for you? Oh well. Hey I guys, I'm going heading out now. Alright. Oh, okay, yeah. John. I also have homework to do, so. Oh. Right. I'm still in school, high school. I'm still in school too. I'm, I'm on my uh, extra year of high. I, I finished grade 12 last year, 
but I'm doing like an, I'm doing an extra semester, so I'm <coughs> currently still in high school. Yeah. All right, today was a good right. fellowship, you know. Yeah. yeah. See y'all later. You're welcome to meet channel anytime you want to, Amir. All right, I'll be looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's nothing. There's no massively interesting on there either. Really. If the rapture right, takes place guys. today, it will be all over the news. <laughs> yeah. All right. See ya. Okay. Good night, brethren and sister. God bless you, Amir. Thank you for coming in. All right. I'm closing the stream now. If you want to come in and chat, you can do. I haven't blocked anybody apart from the clown running that site. If you're a bunch of denlingers, get away, you disgusting pigs. You make me want to puke. How's that grab you? That's okay, Linda. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, um, well, microphones aren't expensive. You can get to little headphone type things with a mic. Just plug it in. Yeah. Well, I think I'm closing the stream now, and uh, I don't know when I'll be doing another live stream. But as soon as we do, we pop in. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to give it out live on YouTube. Uh, I'll tell you what, if you just click on the link... All oh, right. Oh, I can't get it all on. Yes, I can. Right, just delete that comment, uh, Linda. Oh, I'll remove it because I've copied it now. Uh, it's gone because I don't want some denling there getting your email address and then. Sending you a lot of fill. I'm to send you an email now, Linda. A short one. There, gone. Yeah, that's okay, and I've got your email address. I deleted your comic with the email address on, so nobody else gets it. Hopefully, nobody did other than me. Okay, Linda, God bless you. Thank you for coming. I've sent you an email. Yeah. Right, bye. I'm going now. I'm going to make a cup of tea. See if I can find something to eat. Right. Closing. In about five seconds. God bless you.